Today I shall be talking in British accent <laughs> to pay respect to my good friends Richard Branson and Margaret Thatcher. Uh, I was asked to uh, talk about leadership, what we have to learn to become leaders of tomorrow. So here we go. I have been fascinated by an aura. And uh, we all feel aura, but uh, we cannot measure it. But let's uh, uh, look at some of the pictures which I have taken. This is Margaret Thatcher. Uh, can we uh, dim the light a bit here? <clears throat> Better. Thank you very much. You can feel the aura around Margaret Thatcher, which you can't feel around me. <laughs> See? What is it? Here is, oops, here is Elizabeth Taylor. I helped her raise money in Japan to uh, combat against AIDS. You can also feel tremendous aura around her. You see what I mean? Here is uh, uh, President Gerald Ford and Mr. Akio Morita, Sony's founder, whom I interviewed at uh, President Ford's villa in Vail, Colorado. Here again, you can feel the aura around them. Here is uh, Christy Hefner um, to, the, to the left. She's the daughter of Hugh Hefner, the founder of the Playboy magazine. And she was uh, actually a CEO of a, a Playboy uh, enterprise for many years. Good friend of mine. Then Sean Connery, of course, uh, you all know 007. He was a very, very nice man. This was a shot in Hawaii when uh, uh, I participated in the Pro-Am tournament hosted by Mark McCormack. Now, Mark McCormack is the gentleman who has made sports a major business. And uh, uh, he managed Arnold Palmer, Jack Nicklaus, and uh, Gary Player, and uh, many other sports personalities. And they have all started to make much, much more money because of his uh, management. He's got an aura too. Here is Florence Joyner. I interviewed her for my TV program. She was very beautiful. Of course, she was the fastest woman on earth, and she won the gold medal at the Seoul Olympic. Here is Donald Trump. Uh, I interviewed him on his 43rd uh, birthday, and uh, he was uh, very confident, and uh, he told me, well, I might consider to run for the president of the United States if many people want me to. So arrogant, you know. <laughs> but he was full of confidence. He's still going very strong, in spite of the fact that uh, he was bankrupt a few times. But uh, he uh, hosts uh, his TV show. He plays golf. And he still manages lots of hotels, resorts, and casinos. Again, you can feel the aura around him. So what I have tried, OK, I may be wrong, but what I have tried was how we can measure one's aura with, in numbers, how we can do that. Here we go. Now, I have uh, tried to uh, find some elements which constitute your aura. Okay, the first category, 10 elements, are all inner values. Okay, you should have education. Okay, person A and person B. Okay, I, for the sake of argument, I have tried to score their aura. Person A has a wonderful education, uh, graduate from, say, uh, Harvard, graduate from Globus. Okay, and uh, uh, on the other hand, B, person B, 
may not have such a brilliant uh, uh, educational background. So his score is eight. Achievement. You might have earned your MBA, okay, or you might have uh, written a book, you might have uh, uh, produced a TV program, etc., etc. Okay, person A has done so many, so he's got ten. B, not so many, maybe nine. Number three, reputation. Reputation as a result of your achievements, you earn reputation. Right? This is very, very important. Richard Branson always tells me reputation is very important. That is what we can leave after we are gone. Okay? So, reputation nine and eight. Confidence. Okay? Confidence emits aura too, right? A person with confidence, you can feel the aura. Okay, person A has lots of confidence. B, maybe not as much. Content, this is very important. What you have inside, you have philosophy in life, okay? And you have values, very, very important before you learn how to communicate. You have to have something to communicate, to start with, right? The so content's very, very important. Common sense. Okay, we are living in a society uh, with so many people, so there are some rules and etiquettes and manners, right? So you have to have common sense. Number seven, religious mind, maybe very, very important, okay? Historical insight. It is very important, as Margaret uh, Thatcher told me, that we should learn from history. Margaret Thatcher respects Winston Churchill. Okay? Very, very strong attitude, a firm attitude of Margaret Thatcher comes from Winston Churchill. So we should learn from history. Global outlook. We are living in a global age. Okay? We are not only doing business in Japan, but all the countries all over the world are our markets, right? So we have to have global outlook. And ethics, of course, ethics is the most fundamental thing to support yourself, right? Unless you have ethics, okay? Business ethics, okay? Very, very important. You can't do anything you want. There should be some rules, restrictions, laws to abide by, right? So these are the inner values which uh, I have listed. Interesting, isn't it? The, uh, to measure your aura. Second, second part is attitude, okay? Do you have many hobbies? The more hobbies you have, huh, the more interesting person you become, right? If you are concentrating on only education, only study, you might become a pretty boring person, right? Okay, you do flower arrangement, you do golf, you do cooking, and uh, you do, uh, uh, you like art, everything, music, then you become a more interesting person. Humor, I paid respect with you here <laughs> to British. <laughs> Sense of humor is so important, and uh, it's the uh, icebreaker when you meet with somebody for the first time. Like I'm meeting you, most of you, for the first time. But I try to be interesting. I try to be funny sometimes. Then that breaks ice between us. It is very important. Manners, of course, very important. And curiosity to new things, to try to do new things. That is very important because there are so many new things coming out every day, right? New type of a, a gadget, new type of, a, say, iPad 2, or mobile phones with all sorts of the, uh, new features. You want to try those things, okay? If you pay no attention, no curiosity, then you're dead. You lag behind 
the, uh, the tempo of the uh, uh, modern age. Curiosity to new people. This is also very important. You want to meet uh, with somebody and you want to make more friends, right? So show your curiosity to other people. Say hello. Say, I'm, my name is so-and-so. Where do you live? What do you like? Very important. Adventurous attitude. This I learned from Richard Branson. He thinks everything is adventure. Business or life is an adventure. For you too, okay? You have a wonderful future ahead of you. You can try many, many new things. Sometimes you might think, oh, I'm risking my money, I'm risking my time, my, I'm risking uh, my body or whatever. Do it, okay? The biggest regret that you will have is not to have tried what you wanted, right? So this adventurous attitude. Will to learn. There is no age limit in learning. That is why I have decided to go to Stanford at the age of 45. I always wanted to go to either Harvard or Stanford. But I could not just after graduating from Hitotsubashi. I got a job at Sony. But uh, then I left Sony at the age of 35. And then for, for 10 years, I was doing my own business. Then I thought, uh-oh, Shu, watch out. You are discharging more than you have. So you are empty now. Study again. That is why I, uh, I decided to go back to school, Stanford. And that was a very, very good experience. And so, will to learn, this has to continue until the last day. Okay, I'm still learning. I'm 66 years old, but I'm still learning every day. Okay, respect to others, very, very important. Okay, love to everybody. Okay, this is also very important to your friends, to your family, to your parents. Okay, love. Time management, this is again very, very important. Our time on, on this earth is limited. I'm 66 years old. In 20 years time, I'll be gone. Unfortunately, I have to admit. So what I can do is to maximize the density of today. Right? Work hard, learn as much as I can, meet nice people, have good time, play golf, go to sauna bath, whatever. Right? So make the density of your day as thick, as, as full as possible. And uh, here I try to score person A and person B, 90, 90. Good contest. Now the last category is outer elements. Okay, this is, these are very important too. After you have accumulated your knowledge and your common sense, philosophy, you want to uh, communicate, okay, those values to other people. You might want to influence them. You might want to uh, win the uh, election by convincing all the voters. Right? Now, these outer elements are very important, although these are sometimes uh, more or less neglected in the Japanese society. In Japan, we do not talk so much about outer uh, looks, you know, but it is very important. Looks, okay? How you look? Shine, right? Be healthy, okay? Then you'll be surrounding yourself with an aura, very healthy, positive aura. That is very important. Then other people might, might say, ah, he is very lively. He looks like he's a lot of fun. I want to become friends with him. I want to do business with him. I want to go out with him. Okay? Clothes. <laughs> I was talking about my clothes today. <laughs> this one, Believe it, it or not, is about 35 years old. I bought this in London. It's a very nice Gucci 
blazer jacket. I can still fit in. <laughs> Over the past two months, I have lost three kilos. Now I'm 66 kilos. I used to be 69 kilos. Now, back to 35 years ago. So I tried this one today, then it fits perfect, doesn't it? Very important. <laughs> Skill of speech. This you can train. The reason why I, I uh, enjoy speaking in front of people is that I took a uh, speech lesson at Sandwich High School uh, when I was uh, 17 years old. I used to be an exchange student to Sandwich, Illinois, a very, very small town uh, with a population of only uh, 5,000. 60 miles west of Chicago in the middle of a cornfield. Okay? And there I learned speech, speech class, and also typing class. Those two skills are helping me tremendously nowadays. I can type probably fastest among all the, say, above 50 years old or, or anybody in Japan, I'm very, very fast in, the, in typing. And uh, so please try to learn how to speak. Very important. Slowly, clearly, and easy languages, just like I'm doing right now. Body language. Use your hand, use your body to communicate. Very important. Although Japanese people are not so used to it, but try to learn it. Facial expressions. I use lots of facial expressions. Right? Very important. Okay? Show your emotions and show your emphasis on your uh, content with your facial exp uh, expressions. Posture. Again, this is very important. If somebody was making a speech with a you know, poor posture like this, you do not want to listen to him. Right? Be like this. Right? Straight up, straighten up uh, your back and talk very, very loud, clear. Bodily strength. This is also very important. I train my body uh, almost every other day. It naturally builds up the muscles and uh, then uh, taking a sauna bath and so on and so forth keeps you clean. And that people can feel. Okay. Cleanliness. Body order. This is uh, again very important. If uh, uh, your body order stinks, your mouth stinks, people don't wanna, uh, want to associate with you. Be careful. Handshake, hug. Again, handshake, nice, friendly handshake gives you aura. Okay, now this uh, uh, third category, A person, 96, B person, 85 total. Out of a full mark, 300, 268 to 265. I may be wrong, but uh, I tried to uh, uh, break down the uh, elements of uh, aura like this. And uh, aura cannot be measured, but everyone feels that aura counter may become a reality in several years' time. Okay? Now, let's move to uh, Richard Branson and Margaret Thatcher. Um, I learned from Richard the, uh, how to enjoy life. He always says, life is short, let's enjoy it. Okay? He has no barrier between enjoyment and business. He does business because he enjoys it. Right? It's so important. If you have to work every day doing something you really do not like, it's pathetic because you are spending more than eight hours every day doing something you don't like. That's no good. Don't do it. Enjoy every minute of it. That is what I learned from Richard. Margaret Thatcher. I learned ethics and the philosophy from Margaret Thatcher. She is from an ordinary family. And she is not a uh, sort of a 
aristocratic class. But uh, she studied very hard, went to Oxford, and uh, uh, studied chemistry, then uh, became a politician. She's a, a very uh, interesting case of, uh, say, American dream coming true in Britain. Okay, she climbed up the ladder. Now, um, I met Richard for the first time in 1988 when I interviewed him in my TV program, which I hosted and uh, produced called uh, Hello VIP uh, for uh, TV Tokyo. Ever since, we have been good friends and we are still exchanging emails and uh, phone calls. And the other day, he, uh, he called me, Shu, can you help me? Yes, what can I do for you? Um, as you know, I'm uh, going into space, a uh, space uh, tour. And, uh, but after that, I want to uh, uh, go under the uh, very, very deep sea. Oh, yeah? And what? Could you probably get the uh, map of the uh, deep ocean near Japan and Mariana uh, area, which I managed to get for him? So he can go down in a special submarine and explore. So we are still very, very good friends. For Richard Branson, business should be an entertainment. So he loves flying. So he made Virgin Atlantic Airways, then uh, Virgin Megastores to sell CDs and DVDs because he loves music. Because he loves money, <laughs> he made a Virgin Money Company, that's a financial uh, institution, Virgin Cinemas. Uh, how many of you uh, uh, knew that uh, there was a Virgin Cinema in Roppongi? When uh, the uh, Roppongi Hills opened up, there's a beautiful uh, Virgin Cinema Theater, which uh, Toho uh, eventually bought. But uh, uh, Virgin Cinemas and then Virgin Mobile, he is in mobile business as well, and many others. Why does he do all these? Because he loves all these things. He enjoys, okay? So enjoyment and job, business should be the same, okay? So please try to think very hard if you are doing your work because you love it, okay? Think again if you are not enjoying your job, okay? If you are enjoying, then you will do a better job than anybody else. Then you can work until, say, 3 o'clock in the morning. You don't care. You don't worry about it, right? You don't think, you know, oh, gee, why do I have to do this? Nobody is paying me any extra uh, overtime, but I have to do this by tomorrow. Don't do it. Leave that company, OK? Find something else. OK, this is uh, when Richard came to Japan. And uh, we are still very, very good friends. And we enjoy our friendship as well as doing business together. His uh, theme is a break the monopoly. He hates monopolies. Say, for example, cola. Cola market is dominated by two giants worldwide, right? Coca-Cola and the Pepsi-Cola. Richard didn't like, the, like it. So he uh, came up with Virgin Cola. One day, he came to Japan, and he said, Shu, I have come up with this uh, Virgin Cola. Could you possibly uh, find the uh, company in Japan which might want to uh, handle uh, Virgin Cola? So I arranged a meeting with the chairman of uh, a Daie Group, Daie and Lawson. Okay? And uh, I arranged a, uh, a breakfast meeting among this chairman uh, and uh, Richard and myself. 
Richard was doing all the talking, and I was doing all the translation. And this uh, uh, Daiei's chairman, Mr. Nakauchi, uh, unfortunately he is, uh, he's gone now, but uh, uh, he was eating, and uh, uh, he was nodding. <laughs> no replies, right? And uh, Richard was saying, oh, this virgin cola has uh, so much carbonation, so it gives you more oomph than, uh, than Coca-Cola. And uh, Coca-Cola is sold at 120 yen for 350 uh, milliliter a can. Ours is much bigger, 500 milliliter can for 79 yen. <laughs> and Mr. Nakauchi was, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and they're still eating, right? And then Mr. Nakauchi finished uh, his, uh, his breakfast uh, without giving us any indication, any uh, reactions. He said, uh, uh, I must go to Kobe because there was a terrible earthquake and uh, some of my uh, employees died, so uh, I have to go there now. Goodbye. And Richard was uh, perplexed and he said, Shu, did I say anything wrong? I said, no, I don't think so. But he didn't say anything about the virgin cola. Yeah, that's true. Maybe he's a very shy gentleman. Yeah, but uh, he was so quiet. Then, telephone rang. I picked up the phone. Oh, this is uh, Mr. Tanaka, a director of uh, uh, Daiei Corporation. Our chairman, Mr. Nakauchi, told me to order three million cases of virgin cola right away. Richard, we have a good news. We have just sold the three million cases of virgin cola in Japan. Hooray! You know, Richard was so happy. Shoot, you have just earned 5% commission. <laughs> I was very happy too. You know, so we mix enjoyment with business. That is the best way to do it. And uh, Richard <laughs> put uh, virgin cola's <laughs> outfit like this, and we did the uh, uh, press conference, and it uh, was sensational. Now, break the monopoly. British Airways was dominating the market in uh, uh, Great Britain. And uh, Richard was given an opportunity to start a new airline, right? But, British Airways did not like that. Oh, that guy, that Virgin guy is coming into a, a airline business? No way. We had better destroy him. So British Airways did all sorts of dirty tricks, which Richard describes, and tried to uh, uh, stop uh, Virgin Atlantic Airways growth. But now, Virgin Atlantic Airways is voted as one of the best airlines in the world. If you have a, a opportunity to fly on their upper class someday, <laughs> okay, it's not that expensive. They give the first class services for the business class price, okay? So I'll be uh, flying to London uh, next Monday on the Virgin upper class. Then I'll be enjoying champagne, <laughs> champagne and the music and the movies and the massage and the manicure service and everything. Beautiful. Okay. I hope you will fly on Virgin someday. And uh, now Virgin is... Uh, firmly established as one of the major airlines in the world. And uh, what Richard told me is fascinating. Before Virgin Atlantic Airways came, airline business was a transportation business. That is to say, to carry people from point A to point B. That's a tr transportation business. As far as Richard was concerned, Virgin Atlantic Airways was not 
in the transportation business, but entertainment business. From Narita to London Heathrow Airport, you have to sit for 13 hours. Okay? If you are in the transportation business, it's okay that uh, uh, passengers sit there for 13 hours as long as you carry them safely to London Heathrow. But for Richard, that should be an entertaining hour, entertaining 13 hours, right? He wants you to enjoy those 13 hours as much as possible with music, movies, food, wine, massage, manicure, everything. And the ambience. And they are very nice flat, full flat seat. You can sleep. Okay? So he changed the concept of airline business from transportation business to entertainment business. See? So it is very important to make your customers very happy. So whatever you are doing now, okay, try to think, how can I entertain my customers? How can I make my customers happy? Then your performance will improve dramatically. Okay, my hobbies are my business. He loves flying, so not only Virgin Atlantic Airways, he uh, has started this uh, space trip like this. Okay, you go up probably um, twice as high as the, uh, uh, probably more. Uh, until you lose the gravity, right? You go there, and then you will enjoy the uh, weightless uh, experience for about five, ten minutes. Then you come back, right? For all this, probably it takes probably a couple of hours. Okay, for a couple of hours, you pay twenty-five million yen. That's a lot of money, like a $250,000. That's a lot of money. But one of my best friends, the uh, Kozo Hiramatsu, the uh, ex-president of LiveDoor, he and I used to be uh, uh, good friends at Sony. He used to work at Sony. So he called me one day, Shu, may I ask you a favor? I want to be the first Japanese in the Virgin Space Adventure. So. I will pay $250,000, and uh, I want to be in, the, uh, 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 in this adventure. So I uh, sent uh, an email to uh, Richard. Richard, my good friend uh, Kozo Hiramatsu wants to be the first Japanese passenger in your uh, space adventure. Fine, good. So he was in long before it was advertised in Japan. And then Kozo Hirama said, uh, Shu, thank you very much for this, but I want to be in the first aircraft to go up to the space. So I sent uh, Richard another email. Well, Richard, Kozo wants to be in the first uh, 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 aircraft. And then came back a very, very hilarious and funny uh, answer from Richard. Sorry, Shu, the first aircraft is already a four. I have invited the chairman of uh, British Airways, Japan Airlines, and ANA. They go out and they never come back. <laughs> but in fact, he and uh, his uh, son and daughter are going up in the first aircraft. Music is my lifetime business. He loves music. So he made this a Virgin Megastore. Virgin Megastore, he asked me to make in Japan. So I talked to the uh, 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 Mr. Hiroshi Aoi, 
the president of uh, Marui, and uh, uh, he uh, uh, agreed to make a joint venture with uh, Virgin. And after that, we made about 30 uh, Virgin megastores all over Japan. That was very, very successful. This is Richard <laughs> in, in a bridal costume. Uh, three of his uh, employees, girls, uh, uh, came to see him one day. And he said, uh, they said, Richard, we want to start a bridal business. It's called the Virgin Bride. Hey, that's a great idea. Yes, we are going to organize honeymoons and the ceremonies and the parties and everything. That's, let's do it. So they organized a uh, press conference. And uh, he was clad in this uh, <laughs> uh, bridal costume. And uh, it's still doing very well. You see, he enjoys everything. Please remember this. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Very important, OK? Adventurous mind. Unless you take a certain risk, success will not come to you, OK? You have to make up your mind sometime in your life, OK, whether I should do this or not. Okay? Do it. Okay? Even if you failed. Okay, try again. Okay? Actually, this nothing venture, nothing gained. His father told Richard when Richard uh, came to see uh, uh, his father and mother, well, I am leaving school. He was 16 years old. He was a high school dropout, right? And his father was a lawyer. Under the normal circumstances, a father would say, don't be stupid. Finish your senior high school and go to a university and get a good job. This is what probably 99% of fathers would say. But Richard's father was different. Well, Richard, if you are so, so much determined, do it. Then he said this, nothing ventured, nothing gained. His father might have seen the possibility of great success in Richard's determination. See? Very, very important. I want to make people happy. Collaboration with President Bill Clinton. They collaborate and uh, they are doing lots of uh, charity activities together. Then, I want to make people happy. Fight against global warming with Al Gore. Al Gore is ex-Vice President of the United States. And they are cooperating. And actually, Richard uh, is offering something like a $10 million to someone who has come up with the uh, method to reduce the uh, uh, carbon dioxide. And uh, so this is uh, uh, working again. Charity. There is a Virgin Unite, a charity organization, which does lots of uh, uh, useful projects, uh, uh, mainly in Africa. This is uh, uh, Richard's mother. Uh, Richard's mother is 83 years old, still plays golf, and she, uh, she is actively involved in charity. And she and I are very good friends, too. Richard in Africa. And this was a Virgin U Unite party in Los Angeles uh, last year. And uh, I took uh, my friend, uh, American friend, who wanted to meet with uh, Richard. So we were together. And we, uh, uh, donated some money to uh, this Virgin Unite. I love my family. He has a very good family. Then uh, he published this book, Losing My Virginity. This is about, uh, uh, this is an autobiography, which I translated into Japanese. And we did the signing uh, session together. It took me seven months to translate. This is a very, very thick book. And I'll show you. Seven months. No assistant. No assistant. 
usually translators use like two or three uh, translators. But I never wanted to uh, use anybody else because I know about Richard so much. And in fact, I wrote the chapter 19 on, on Japan because I was directly involved in that. Okay? This will be a Junkin Prize later, okay? <laughs> Am I doing okay with the, uh, the timing or too slow? Okay, translation is fun. There was a passage where Richard took uh, uh, his uh, now wife, Joan, to this beautiful island in the Virgin Islands. She loved the island. Oh, Richard, this is so beautiful. Then Richard tried to impress her. Okay, I'll buy this island for you. <laughs> and then uh, he went to, uh, to the uh, uh, real estate company, and he said, how much is this island? And the, he was uh, in a sort of miserable clothing, you know, and uh, uh, didn't look like he, he, uh, he had any money, you know. So the real estate agent said, uh, oh, go away. It's too expensive for you. Oh, how much? Five million dollars. Oh, I have uh, about uh, ten million dollars. No, 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 no. Ten thousand dollars. No, go away. So they were disappointed, and they were walking on the beach, and then Joan said, Richard, it was a good idea. Under the normal circumstances, this is a perfect translation. Richard, so it was a good idea. But it's not interesting at all. So I translated like this. Richard, Then I translated back to English and I explained to Joan, Richard, thank you very much for giving me a good dream. See, translation is fun, okay? Translation is something you translate the feelings, innermost emotion, okay? <laughs> life is short, let's enjoy it. He enjoys life all the time. <laughs> so I try to uh, imitate him. <laughs> Look at this, ah, oh, beautiful. How about this? See, he's silly sometimes. We do silly things together. Okay, now, from silly things to very, very uh, serious matter. I met with uh, Margaret Thatcher back in 1991, March the 19th. World famous writer and a good friend of mine, Jeffrey Archer, introduced me to Margaret Thatcher. This is Margaret Thatcher's office. And uh, then I uh, offered her a lecture trip to Japan, which she accepted. And ever since, I represented her for 10 years. And every year, I invited her to Japan. And she was a very, very popular um, lecturer among uh, big companies and uh, organizations and TV stations. And I organized everything. Now, Margaret Thatcher has a very, very strong notion of being a public servant. Public servant is a very, very interesting word. And Japanese translation is kōboku. I am sure this translation was a direct translation of this public servant, don't you think? Because this is a funny Japanese, right? So this was my, my discovery. So please remember this. Kōboku is a direct translation of public servant. Public servant means, right, you serve for the benefit of the people. But these idiots do not have that kind of a notion. These idiots are fighting for power in spite of that disaster in Tohoku area. They are doing nothing for them. They are just fighting for their own power. What a difference. What we need right now in Japan is Margaret Thatcher, right? Strong leader 
who can dominate, who can do things rather than argue. As I told you, Margaret Thatcher respects Winston Churchill, and she always said we must learn from history, okay? So, ladies and gentlemen, you also try to learn from history, okay? Who do you respect most in history? Try to read about him or her, okay? Spirit of being fair. We must be fair to everyone. Fair. I love this word in English. I think this is the most beautiful word in English, don't you think? Fair. Like a fair hair is a blonde, beautiful. Fair way, golf course, fair, beautiful. Okay? We must be fair. Remember this. Okay? Ethics in politics. One day, I took Margaret Thatcher to uh, LDP's headquarters. There, Mr. Mori, ex-Prime Minister, was there, and uh, uh, what was his na name? I forgot. And Miss, Mrs. Ono, Mrs. Moriyama, they were there. And uh, that was just after LDP lost the majority. They decided to make a coalition government, cabinet, with the Socialist Party, Mr. Murayama, right? And Margaret Thatcher did not like that. So the first thing Margaret Thatcher told these pathetic <laughs> LDP politicians was this. You do not have a principle. Why do you go to bed with the Socialist Party, right? If I were you and cannot get the majority, then I'll be the opposition party, then prepare for the next general election, then come back to power with the majority. This is what she told all these people. And they were really silent. Yeah, they lost their words. Pride as a woman. <clears throat> I was uh, uh, doing a panel discussion, and uh, my guests were Margaret Thatcher and Mrs. Doi Takako of the Socialist Party. And I asked the same question. Uh, did you have any problem uh, in your political activities because you are a woman. And of course, uh, Margaret Thatcher did not like this uh, question at all. Okay? But first, Mrs. Doi said, oh yes, yes, uh, uh, when I was elected to the parliament, uh, I went there, and there was no toilet for ladies. You know, very realistic <laughs> uh, uh, answer. Lady Thatcher said, I was never a woman prime minister. I was the prime minister first, who happened to be a woman, right? He, she was very proud of being a prime minister first, okay? And it had nothing to do with her, whether she was a woman or a man. But she just happened to be a woman. Then she said, we women are used to manage money at home. Women can run a country better than a man. She firmly believed that. Very interesting uh, thought, isn't it? Okay. At the same time, she never forgot that she was a lady. So she used her being a charming lady to her advantage. She always asked me before a, a lecture, uh, what, what is the color of the backdrop of uh, today's uh, party? I will say, oh, it's a, a white uh, curtain, Lady Thatcher. Oh, that's nice. I shall wear red because I want to give a very strong speech. Then 
the following day she might say, oh, I shall wear blue, elegant blue, in order to uh, uh, produce a nice atmosphere. See? She directs herself, and she performs herself. It is very important for you, too, to know what kind of an impression you want to generate. And accordingly, you make plans. And you direct yourself, and you perform, OK? Rather than saying things uh, sort of uh, without any plans, without any strategies, OK? Be strategic. I asked her, Lady Thatcher, you are a wonderful speaker of the English language. Which words do you like best? She said, thank you and I am sorry. Thank you. When somebody else did something nice to you, say thank you. The first thing which we uh, used to do uh, after uh, we finished the uh, lecture, uh, Lady Thatcher comes back to her uh, hotel room. Let's sign all the thank you notes to everyone who made this event possible today. So she was signing everything. See? Very, very considerate. So the person, the say, president of a company which organized an uh, uh, event, receives a, uh, a thank you letter from Margaret Thatcher the following day with a nice picture, which he will treasure the rest of his life. See? Very considerate. And I am sorry. If you have made a mistake, if you made somebody unhappy, if you were um, uh, impolite, say, I am sorry. You know, it's much better than, uh, because I uh, was, uh, you know, uh, don't try to find excuses. Say, I am sorry. That's much cleaner. Now, this, is, this will be very uh, useful for you. Lots of people talk about Thatcherism, but not so many people know about it. Okay? These three slides will give you very brief explanations of Thatcherism. After you have seen these three slides, you will become the expert of Thatcherism. First, Deregulation and privatization. Smaller government. Okay? She made these uh, corporate companies, national companies, private. Okay? By doing so, they improved the efficiency, their stock price rose, everybody was happy. And less involvement by the government made it so much easier for companies to uh, do anything they want to do, to do. Second slide, Big Bang and the Wimbledon phenomenon. Big Bang is the, uh, the very beginning of the universe. But at the same time, uh, liberalization of uh, the financial uh, systems in London. That's uh, Margaret Thatcher named Big Bang. Because of this, London remained as one of the financial centers of the world, still is. But there were uh, minus side as well. All the major players became foreigners. These uh, British uh, uh, financial institutions, Morgan Grenfell, Barings Bank, and the Kleinwald Benson were bought by foreign uh, companies. It's just like Wimbledon tennis. Wimbledon tennis is staged in London, but most of the winners are foreigners. That's why they call it the Wimbledon phenomenon. Remember this. People will be impressed. Tax reform. This was brilliant. 
income tax was cut from 83% to 40%, the top echelon. And she made it very simple. There were so many uh, layers uh, of uh, 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 income tax, 11 different percentages, and she made it very simple, only 2% uh, percent 25% and 40%. Very simple, very easy. So lots of rich British people came back to Britain who otherwise uh, were living in Switzerland or Channel Islands or Virgin Islands where taxes almost nil. Okay? Corporate tax was cut from 52% uh, to 35%. This gives more uh, uh, money to uh, invest for companies in people, in factories, in offices, right? It's sort of a, a stimulated economy. On the other hand, value added tax was increased from 8% to 15%. Now it's 17.5%. In Japan, consumption tax is only 5%. But there are so many arguments against the increase of uh, consumption tax. Do you know why? Because politicians are, cannot be trusted. They're so silly. They are, and I, I do not trust them either. So we cannot increase the uh, uh, consumption tax. But Margaret Thatcher did. Trusting. Well, actually, people trusted uh, politicians in the uh, uh, United Kingdom because they were more how is it, humble than uh, the Japanese uh, politicians, right? Here we go. So you have now learned Thatcherism, OK? Remember, remember this. So to summarize, keep learning and build, build up uh, your knowledge and wisdom inside, OK? Without knowledge and wisdom inside, it's hollow, OK? Empty. No good. This is the uh, very important, most important thing. And then after that, how to communicate your thoughts and the philosophy most effectively to other people. Okay? Business, politics, or whatever. Okay? You need to explain your thoughts, your ideas to other people and try to convince them. Then you may be able to sell your products. You may be able to sell yourself so that they will vote for you. Okay? So this communication skill is very important. So to acquire the effective communication tools, okay? as I said to you, content philosophy is the most important thing. After that, try to use your language. Try to use your speaking uh, uh, skill. The humor, smile, body language and aura, okay? We'll come back to this aura. Put an aura around yourself. This is very important in your business, in your job. Even in order to get a uh, nice girlfriend, okay? It is very important to uh, surround yourself with, a, with an aura. For ladies too, okay? Put an aura around you then you have so many boyfriends asking for date. Okay? So, Richard and Margaret say good luck to you all. Thank you very much. <laughs>